Okay, designing a campaign landing page, a Squarespace tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. What is a campaign landing page? And I put campaign in brackets because it's really a landing page with a purpose to support a campaign. So what is it? It is a standalone web page created specifically for a marketing or advertising campaign. Its sole purpose is to prompt a particular action, commonly known as a call to action. Whether you want your audience to sign up, purchase, or download a resource, the landing page is where the magic happens. And similar to last week, this is a continuation of developing a, a lead magnet campaign. And today's session is focused on how do we design that landing page? And this is how it falls into the circle of um, a lead campaign. So when do you actually need this? Because you don't always, every time you do a campaign, you don't always require a landing page. Well, if you have a specific goal, like we talked about, whether it's a lead gen download page, a product launch, or an event promotion, you'll probably want a landing page. Also, if you want to track and measure campaign performance, it's quite critical because it can stay focused. All of your links will come back to that landing page and you'll be able to track where they are on the landing page, all your metrics, um, and it keeps the campaign focused. Um, another reason is if you want a tailored user experience, if that's crucial to conversion, then you want a landing page. So as if it's a product, and you don't want to just send them to a product page, you have to build up information around that product, you'll probably want to create a campaign informing them specifically about that product with support for that conversion. So those are three reasons why you would use a landing page. So if you missed last week's session, or if you're reviewing this again as um, a pre-recorded webinar that it is, the QR code is there um, for you to go directly to this. This one is part two of this. And, and if you watch this and get the resources, it will help you build that foundation of planning a lead generation campaign. So as we mentioned before, there's different lead generation campaigns. And today's session, we're gonna just on the demo, we're gonna show you the a content marketing one. So this is really around an ebook, a download. We're going to continue our Garden Grows demo and have uh, and, and show you what that is. So that's a different one. And they're going to lay out a very in a very different way. If you're doing a, an event or doing a workshop, you're going to have different information on it, different um, information on what to gather from them on a form, all of that type. So today, though, um, content marketing campaigns, what we're going to do. And to revisit this, there is a wireframe. It's a good resource at Unbounce on basically a starting point, a benchmark on how to create that landing page. So I do encourage you, if you're getting started, read a bunch of different examples, learn about it, go find different templates, and start to craft your wireframe. And that is just a mock-up so that you don't forget to use some um, put something into the design because you can go into the Squarespace demo or the Squarespace or whatever platform you're using and start to move things around. But it's nice to think it through ahead of time. So you can use something. I use Miro. You can hand sketch it. You can do it uh, mock up on a Word document, whatever that is. I do recommend getting started there. And Unbounce also has templates. So there, it is a place where, and I've never used it, full disclosure, but it's a place where you can have an external landing page. There's benefits, pros and cons of doing one within the website and having an external one. Quite often an external landing page program like Unbounce is when you don't have access or the capabilities to do it within your website. Uh, that is one key reason that that happens when you have a larger um, uh, marketing team is very separate from your website team and they want to have full control. So that is one of the reasons, but they also have some really good templates if you just want examples. So getting started, this is your checklist. Number one, you need to con conduct and gather research. So what is the um, information you need? Um, what's performing well, that could be heat maps from previous sessions, that could be your Google Analytics, um, maybe it's new a survey 
of your customers before you actually start to create the copy. Um, that might be um, part of the research. So get your research together, develop your campaign brief. That's from that creating a lead generation campaign. You wanna put that together. That's the who, what, why, when, and how of your campaign. Get your offering ready to sell. That might be um, your product. Maybe you need product photos. Maybe you need to actually package it together. Maybe it is your download. You actually have to write it and then you have to format and print it and make sure it's somewhere so that they can access it. So that's getting your offering ready to sell. Then you wanna gather your brand assets. That will be your logo. That'll be your color, your brand guidelines, all the colors you need to do. Um, I often have Canva open so I can just copy my hexes and, and have all that information there as I need it. Um, then you want to gather the images and graphics, really important because we know visuals, images tell a story within themselves and capture it much faster. Plus it gives interest and we know it does help conversion. So do gather the appropriate images and graphics or create them. Write your landing page content, and that can be on a document, whatever that is. If you want to use AI to get started, um, I quite often use that for brainstorming. Whatever that is, make sure your content, the basis of it, is there. Right? It might You might have to format it as you start to design it, but you want to have it set. And then create that wireframe, and I did put that optional, as I had mentioned, uh, but it does, is nice to have an idea of what you want to do and what you want to include. Then you go to, to, to it, right? You got to actually design your landing page. So open up whatever program you need and it's time to get started. And once that landing page is ready to go before you start promoting it, make sure you do test it, right? So, so have a look at it, have other people look at it, publish it, and then of course, get into the, the point of promoting. So that's your quick checklist for designing a landing page. So. Now we Laura, get into it. Yes. Sorry, I, just, I just can't see the bottom of the screen. What was the last item on that list, please? I will tell you. Oh, it just talks about seeing the previous session, creating a lead gen campaign from last um, from last week to re revisit that before this, because that's going to help you develop your campaign brief. Thank you. That's where the asterisk is. You're welcome. All right, how do we design it? We're going to use Squarespace as an example today, but really it can be done on WordPress, Wix, whatever that is, um, but we will dive into Squarespace today. And we are going to continue to use our Garden Grows example. That is our demo company for anyone who's new. Um, and Garden Grows is a garden center, but they've also introduced landscape design services and they, one of their goals, if you can see that at the bottom there is to get 500 email subscribers. You'll see this is a continuation of a marketing campaign we've been building out. And now we have to create this lead magnet. And what the lead magnet is, is this series of seasonal magazines for the landscape. Um, to promote and excite and build this email list. And so you're going to get an intro one as soon as you sign up, as well as all of the magazines. So one of the things on the checklist before you can even get started is actually design your magazine. So remember that, that all of these types of the content marketing, when it's big like this, do make a plan because it takes time to actually design it. So create your deadlines, create your goals, and start to do a work back. You know, whether you plan it in a Santa or Notion or just in some type of task management, put that campaign together because it will help you build on success. So we're going to create a landing page to capture emails for this lead magnet. And this is the start of it. So let's head over there. All right, this is the website. Again, it normally you're going to have your website and you're going to build on it. I don't recommend if you're just doing one small campaign to do what I just did because you have to now go back and build your website. So the assumption here is if you're going to use Squarespace um, is that you will already have your website in place. And what that means too, which I didn't have here because it was it was a demo, is you're going to have your whole, you're going to have site-wide, um, all your branding, 
already there. You're going to have your colors there. You might even have sections and we'll go into that. And you may already have a landing page. Like the joy of this is once you get your landing page designed and you want to do these more often, you can, you can start to replicate them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So for example, this was, this is how I got started. This was their about. It is just a Squarespace free template. And I actually replicated this to create my demo page just to get started. So if you go to the little cog here in the side of the web page, so just to go back, when you land on your, your Squarespace, you go to website, and then here at the top are all the main navigation linked web pages, right? The ones you're gonna see across the top. So it gave me an about, I went into the cog, and at the very bottom of the general, you can duplicate the page. Now, once that happens, close, it's gonna create this page down here at the bottom. So these are not linked and they're sitting here and they're so far live. Again, this is not a published site. So you will have live, you could have a live web page. It's it can be found, but it's not linked anywhere. So you or you can disable it. If you choose to, if you have a live website, you choose to disable it, you can do that here in the settings. And that way no one will see it, not even Google. So for now, we don't really doesn't really matter. It's not published. What I did was create this, this demo, it's email sign up demo. I just called it that. That was the the title I gave it. If I go back into the cog, do you see here? That's where I can change the page title because it was it was about number two, right? Copy. So I just changed that. The navigation title is what comes up in in the little browser window. And then this is the URL slug. So I'm going to call it, and what the, that is, it's the extension past your website domain um, demo. And then that's it. And I'm just going to save it. I mean, you'll go back afterwards to that and do some more details, but this is just for, for today. So I'm going to go on the copy one just in case I mess it up a little bit. I actually double duplicated it. And this is what it looks like. Now I've gone in and made some changes, obviously, to that about page. Now what I have to do, and I'm going to just show you some key things as I go down and then leave you guys to ask any questions. So I have to hit edit because I can't do anything unless I do that. And then all of a sudden, when I'm in a section, it's going to highlight. That means it's active. So basically what happens is you have sections for each of your page, right? And you can add sections, you can take away sections, and then you can add elements, which they call blocks into each section. So at the top, remember we wanted a hero image, they called it, like something that grabs your attention. It's a visual, it's pretty, um, and it's appropriate. And that's at the top here, and that's top of the fold. That's a really important place to have information. Now we wanted to put a picture. How do we put a picture? We actually want to put a picture in behind the section. So over to the right of the section it says edit, background, and I just uploaded a picture that I had. So that's one thing to do. Now I'm going to tell you a tip for Squarespace anyway, please do make sure they're optimized any pictures before they come up. And that means they're condensed, they're compressed. We use tiny JPEG or tiny PNG because you, if it's too big, it will slow down your website. That's really bad. Um, also make sure it is high resolution and it is named properly so far. As of this recording, you cannot go in and change the name after it's been published of the file. And if you want to, for search engine reasons, have that um, naming convention, it's really good for search. Um, please do name your name your images before. And I recommend going ahead when we're doing pre preparation for all of our documents, go through all your pictures, find the ones you want or potentially want, compress them name them, put them in a folder that you're going to be working in, and that'll make your life so much easier. So that is the picture, the back of the section. And then we added our logo because I, I don't actually have a logo up here. I've decided to put a word mark up here, partially because I haven't done it. Um, so this is the Garden Grows logo. And 
basically this is the H1, right? So what that means is you only can have one H1. That's the heading one. And that's what Google's going to first find. That's the big one. That's the main one. Only ever have one. And it should be usually at the top. Doesn't always have to be. And it has to state what it is. So we're doing a gardening magazine. And then down below, which is another block, it's a text block. We are going to be providing landscape design tips, trends, and ideas. And the whole idea is if it's searchable, um, it's it's good because that's telling us what it is. It's also telling me right away when I send people here, yep, it's the gardening magazine. So if we've done an ad and it's coming here and saying, hey, do you want a free gardening magazine? They're going to land here and go, oh, wow, gardening magazine. And that's really important, especially for a campaign. And then they're going, what is this gardening? magazine. Well, it's landscape design tips, trends, and ideas. So that's the H2 and see how we can change it up here in the edit. And then it turns into a normal browser. Nope, I've put it as an H3. Okay, it's because we have an H2 coming below. So you don't have to have an H1, 2, 3. That's not necessarily how it has to be. So there we go. That's the top section, the hero section. Now below, we're going to say, obviously, it's like, this is what they're going to get. Oh, right. It looks like a magazine. So I've given an image of what this magazine looks like. And we've now started to introduce the name, the Natura Gardening. Now, I do believe this is my H2. Yes. So that is now an H2. I've bolded it even more. And I've even put a fun little line underneath. And you can do that up here in the browser and that little squiggly thing. And you have different options. You could circle it if you want. You can do a squiggly. Maybe a squiggly is better. Or you could just stick with the fun one. And you can change the thickness. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. We won't get into the details, but it's so fun. Um, paragraph one. Now we're taking us down through the journey, right? That's the idea is to take them through the journey. Welcome to Garden Grows, you know, where we meet design, sign up now, all of that good stuff is all in there. And basically it's a summary of everything Google needs to tell the Google search, but it's also a summary of everything you need to tell your visitors. So if I only got here, then I have all that information. So give them the full story. If they need to develop and need more information, then put it on down below. So now we're gonna introduce Dania, because who is she, right? This is a whole new thing for them. Dania is the editor in chief. She is also the landscape designer. So it's, I thought, oh, we'll put in another section because maybe they need a little bit of welcome, right? Like we really want this to be a community. We want to give her face out to it. So we put in a letter from the editor. Now to add an image, I'll show you how to do this. We just got to add a block and see when, as soon as we do an add a block, you have all of these options down here. So all you have to do is to put an image and then you put a plus and you can either browse stock images. You can select from your existing library or upload a file. So if I select from my library, we have all of this. I am going to do, and to let you know, I did not optimize these. They might be a little slow. Um, I wanted to put a picture of her and then I just take it and I drag it so that it doesn't have any weirdness and we can drag it and make it bigger. And the joy of the new Squarespace, it's now a fluid design. So you can just move things around. It's so good. Okay, I'll delete that because we want this new one and see how we just do this and we can just move it. Now what's really important here is that I am looking at a desktop and you go, ooh, a desktop. Now you'll know, you should normally do this at the end, but I'm going to quickly show this to you now. Um, at the very end, and you always want to make sure you do this, you have the option to see what it's going to look like on mobile. Because the mobile will look different, and sometimes it looks a little skewed. And so I'm going to just, I don't know if I can, because I did optimize it. But up at the top right-hand corner, you've got desktop view and mobile view. So hit mobile view, and see now we can move things around again. And you'll have to go back and forth and check both. So it's a little off. So this little hamburger, really big hamburger, makes it go bigger. I am going to do this. And I'm going to just fix it a little bit. And I'm going to move it over and I'm going to center it again, make it a bit bigger. There we go. So it looks much better on mobile, right? 
and then we go back to desktop and make sure it works there too. And it works. It's really important before you publish, make sure you check that. So now we're going to add in that call to action. Okay, so now we know what we're going to get. We know who's inviting us. Are you ready to be inspired? It is just that one of the taglines, join our email list. We've got our email address here and even some social media stuff. So if they stop here, I want to make sure they know where our social media is. And so that way they can sign up. It's like, great. Okay, they've signed up. Well, maybe they haven't signed up. Maybe they need a little bit more information. So we're going to go down. We're going to say, look, there's some pictures of all the different kinds of gardening. This is a gallery of which I had added a section. So if you add a section, see how as soon as I do add a section, I can choose a blank section or they give me a whole bunch of things. So what I had picked was images and I just picked this template. So if I click this, it pops up. It's like, yay, it's so awesome. But now I want to edit it. So you just go in here, you can add pictures. I'm going to search for pictures. Maybe I'm going to pick her again. And we do this. I think you can only do one at a time. And then we added that in. And as soon as you add that in, it works really well. You just, and then you want to get rid of all the other ones. And then what happens, I'm going to actually close this. So just add in the ones you want, delete the ones you want, close them. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to totally remove this section because I'm going to show you what I did on the other one. So you can delete sections, um, remove it. Just remember if you remove it and you delete it, it's not coming back unless you do the little back thing. So you can't do that. Um, so let's just remove it because I have the other one I'm going to show you. So this one, I'm going to edit the gallery. See how it ends up? All four of them are there and everything's there and you can even put a description. I also want to edit the section. So if you go down here, see how originally I think it had six or something. Um, you can change the number of columns. So you, if you have more pictures, if you want just three across, you could do three across. Maybe you have five and you want them to be really small, you can change that. You can also change the aspect ratio, which is pretty cool. And you can change the spacing in between them. A lot of customization, go in and have at it and have some fun playing around with that. Now, if I really like this and I want to use this a lot, I could save that section and use it somewhere in this page or somewhere else on my website. So I just click the heart button. And I'm going to show you what that does. So when I go in to add a section, I go up to the top here, saved sections. Thank you, Squarespace. That really is a game changer it was for me. And you just have to add that saved section in there. So great. Okay, so now we've got a whole bunch of pictures, but we were still not inspired. So it's like, inspire the gardener in you. Okay, what are you going to get? Maybe they want to know what they're going to get. So this little accordion, oh, actually, I can't do it on here. Hold on. has to be live to show it to you. I'm going to save it. And then I am going to exit it. I have to do this. And then you hit the preview button. This is how you can do this. And now I can go down. And I can check it out, what it looks like. So this is an accordion. And it'll tell me a little bit underneath what you're going to get in each of the magazines. Cool, right? Yay. So that's it. That's my, that is that, but it's like, I'm not done. So let's go back in and do some editing. So that's that section. What was new on this section? Oh, this section was cool. So you can actually put a color in behind your text block. So if you click on your, your text and you hit the little button, the little editor, this is the field. And if you click that, there's different colors that you can do. And you can also round the corners. You can round one corner. You can make it large, the padding. Seriously cool. And that's it. So you can do that just to give it some distinction. You can also see how it's a little bit over top. If you do that, see this, and you clicked on it, makes it active. So anytime you have a field or an element, you just have to click on it. And you'll see what your options are. You can, this is your, where it is. So move backwards, duplicate, 
obviously that's nothing. So if I want to move it backwards, I click that, it now goes in behind that image. So I'm going to bring it back. There you go. So that's a cool feature. You can also change if you see this, the colors I've changed. Try and not have all one color. You do want to break it up. It has to make sense. If the information is all the same, you can keep it in the same color, but it's nice to um, break it up. So I just would edit that section, click colors, and here's the site colors. And you just pick one of those. Okay, so now remember we one of the things we needed was social proof. It's like, well, who who's actually liking this product or service? Well, we found this person, Sarah Jane, and we added in a testimonial. This was a testimonial section. So you just have to add in a section um, and then customize it, put your own pictures in. So there's some social proof. Now we're going to go, okay, still, if there's not enough, right? So with your subscription, you will receive, and here's some more information. Basically, we wanted features and benefits. Again, it depends on what campaign you're doing. Um, and then we put in some more information. And now we're going to ask them again. It's like, okay, you got more information. Get your introductory magazine today. Sign up. And then below, I just added in a few other things. Here's an example of the downloads. This is something Emily and I, we do a lot of downloads and we do find showing them a little example um, definitely helps with conversion. So at the very end, maybe you put it down there, maybe it doesn't matter, um, but it did. I did want to show this to you because when you go into this edit section, the aspect ratio had to change. It didn't look right. So I originally had, I think, squares and see how it's cut off. Please don't have them cut off. Make sure it works for whatever you have and you go through that experience. If you are new, and you have to, when you test it, go through and go, what, am, what am I going to experience right now? Really do think through that and also get someone else who's new because you do get caught up in the design. So we're going to go back to that one and it's going to show all the information. So I'm good. And then do, ignore the footer because I haven't optimized that. Now, what's nice about having two different call to actions, right? You're allowing your, your viewer to, and it doesn't mean you have to. This one is actually quite extensive. You can have a very simple landing page and not have all this extra stuff. But initially, what it allows you to do is actually be able to see where on the page your visitors are clicking. So where are they converting? You can do that through heat mapping. Um, Hotjar offers a free one um, and you can see it. You can also um, change it and you'll know what it, when it comes through on where it's clicking. So it's just an extra one. So again, you don't have to have something quite as extensive as this, but I did for the sake of the demo, I wanna show you a bunch of things. And then don't forget to save it, save. Save, always save, and then always test. I'm going to check out mobile and I'm going to run through it. If I have to fix it, oh, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. I'm going to go back to desktop and then sometimes you have to exit. And then I'm back and that's it. And then you basically have to test it. 